Hi, I'm Cynthia. Nice to meet everyone. Um, I'm going to talk today about a couple of projects I've worked on that explore Asian identity and technology. Um, and thanks so much to the organizers for, for letting me chat about this stuff. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm a writer and an artist, and I do a lot of installation art. Um, most of it explores either American identity or Asian identity. So to start off today, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself, um, my life story. So that's this picture of me. I'm the, um, I'm the youngest one there. I'm four years old. Um, and I grew up in Nanjing, which is the southern part of China. And um, my father was assigned a job working in um, IT tech by the Chinese government. And eventually, a number of years later, in 1999, um, he got one of the many tech visas that were being given out to Chinese workers to work in Silicon Valley. So we moved to Fremont, California. Um, and I was one of the many Asian families that immigrated to the US uh, to work in this industry. And um, part of the reason I, want, I wanted to explore Asian identity is because this is such a common story and so intertwined with the history of Silicon Valley. So to start off with some background facts, this might be new to you, but um, Asians or Asian Americans actually constitute the majority of the tech workforce in Silicon Valley now. And um, this stat actually comes from 10 years ago. In 2010, um, Asian workers exceeded white workers in, um, in Bay Area tech corporations. Um, and back then, there were a lot of headlines, like now Asians suddenly outnumber white people in this industry. Um, and you can see the kind of the line chart over there is the, the growth over time. So 10 years ago is when, um, when the shift happened. However, I think throughout my research, I've really found that this idea that technology is a majority Asian industry is often missing from the way that the tech industry is portrayed, either in media or in the public or um, even in the people who lead and are front facing in companies. Um, so the Asian American Legal Defense Fund did this big study of how Asians in the tech industry were doing. And I think it spawned a few articles, like the Atlantic's article titled The Forgotten Minority. Um, but we have this, uh, this bar chart here. It, you probably can't read the text. But I'll just summarize it for you. The different lines represent different demographics. And it's showing um, gaps in executive parity, so the ratio between people who are at the top ranks of a company and lower level workers. And all the red lines are demographics for which the, uh, the parity is negative, so there's far more low level workers than executives. And the green lines are the ones for where there's much higher executives. So the only really top green line are for, for white men, which is at the um, on the right of the chart. And you can see it's really astounding how much higher it is than the other demographics. And for me, I think what was even more striking is the fact that this study, this report came out at a time when there were actually more Asians and Asian Americans in lower level positions. So Asians were the majority of the workforce, and yet um, this executive, um, executive parity was still true. So I started a project a couple months ago, it's called The Voice in the Machine, and I've been sitting down, because I have a bit of a journalistic background, I've been sitting down with a lot of Am Asian Americans who work in the tech industry and interviewing them in both Mandarin and English. I'm hoping to do more languages with, um, with some assistance coming up and asking them about, I, I wanted to talk sort of casually and generally just about their careers, their everyday lives, um, and I'm going to present some of the quotes I have from that coming up. Um, but before that, I wanted to talk about two other two other uh, components of sort of Asian identity in the tech industry. One is Asian labor abroad, and people forget how much that feeds into Silicon Valley. So a lot of uh, electronic devices are more than 50 to 70 percent manufactured by East Asian labor. Um, I think Microsoft, I, uh, in a Washington Post article, was at 75 percent, which is um, sort of a, astounding because of because they're so often excluded from the narratives of these tech devices. Um, one fact that really strikes me is that the workers in China who work on creating Apple iPhones actually get paid less than what an Apple iPhone costs here. 
Um, and it's doubly ironic because part of the design of the Apple iPhone that Steve Jobs drew on was East Asian minimalism. And then the third component of sort of Asian identity and technology I've been thinking about is Sinofuturism, which is um, this trend where a lot of our Western ideas of what a future world looks like are heavily influenced by uh, this idea of a globalized, partially Asian influenced scene. So here you have a lot of scenes from famous movies, Blade Runner, Firefly, Ghost in the Shell. Um, and part of the ways these movies communicate future is that they mix in a lot of Asian imagery and signage. Um, and a lot inspired by um, Chinatowns and East Asian megacities. And this is, a, this is a project I did, it's pictures kind of blurry, a while back where it was an AR drawing of Chinatown, except instead of words, um, I'd converted all the signage into scribbles because um, it was kind of the idea that when we see these, uh, these Sino-futuristic futures, they're really made for an audience that the creators don't think will actually understand the language and is meant to convey a sort of strangeness. Anyways, um, I think I'm running short on time, but I wanted to share some excerpts from the interviews that, that I've been doing. Um, so here's one. I, I asked the person, and these are all conducted anonymously, um, how did you decide to go into the tech industry? And they said, it pays okay, it's a desk job. It's safe, and it's the job for a servant. Tech people are servers to the public and servers to the company. I find that tech people don't typically want to be leaders, and it's a job where you're most likely not client-facing. It's kind of how Asian American cultures have been seen through history, kind of behind the scenes, quiet, put your head down, and do the work type of job. Um, and this wasn't the only person I talked to that expressed a similar sentiment. Another question I asked many people was, are you bothered by stereotypes of Asians in the tech industry? And um, someone said, um, I feel like many Asians choose to go into math, science, engineering because they're stable professions. And I, I know for a few of my friends who are foreign, it's easier to get a work visa in those careers. And it's also easier if you're an international student because math doesn't have language barriers. Ultimately, it's a choice we make, even though the choice is based on a lot of things we can't control. Um, and I asked them things were to imagine um, a US that was more equitable towards Asians and Asian Americans, what are some things that you would imagine? And um, here this person talked about how they wish more communication was done in Chinese and their native languages and how um, they went on to say how it was strange that they worked on a team that was majority foreign Asian, but that all the business communication within their large tech company was conducted in English, um, which is part of the reason I started conducting interviews in Mandarin, and I'm hoping to do other East Asian languages uh, in the future. And then the last thing, I, I asked them to talk about what they thought might make the world more equitable towards Asia and Asian Americans. And again and again, people said that they wanted more representation in movies and music and Asian artists. They wanted to have more images and more of a voice and be more front facing. Um, so I think for me, that's part of the, the case for considering Asian identity more in, in the tech arts. Um, I've been doing going to a lot of tech art festivals over the past couple years, and I think when we talk about identity in tech art, it so often becomes um, sort of everyone versus uh, like a predominant whiteness in, um, in that power structure. But I think it's also extremely important to remember what a large role Asian identity plays and I encourage anyone here who's Asian and Asian American, um, even if you're not an artist, to think about making art that kind of shares the narrative of how um, this culture and technology is intertwined. That's, that's all I'm presenting today. Um, that's, that's me, if you wanna keep up with the project. Um, if you want to contribute to it or you think you have friends who might be interested in being interviewed, I'm doing interviews and collecting. There's also a form you can fill out for responses until the end of February. And the website is voice-machines.com. Um, so feel free to fill that out or pass that along to your friends. Um, I'm presenting some other, some like web poems. They're, they're also about Asian identity and technology in New York next month. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it for me. Thanks.